This is a special edition of AJ Update. At the August 8th Council regular meeting, Councilmember Jeff Surdy had an important announcement for the community. But the Superstition Mountain Museum has pulled off a major coup in that they will have the privilege of displaying the actual Superstition Mountain collection by world-known artist Ted DeGrazia. These are paintings that have not been seen by the public for a long time. This is not the ones of the little children. This is the ones he did while he lived here, and they're all of the mountain. They're all of this area. That's right. The Superstition Collection comes home to the Superstition Mountain Museum. On September 27th, the Superstition Mountain Museum had a special sneak peek for members of the museum and special guests. We had uh, invitation only party, a party, just a gathering in the evening, you know, a little wine, a little cheese, and invited our members and uh, patrons and so forth to come and get a private look before we opened up the public. And we had about 400 people here for that. On Saturday, September 28th, the museum celebrated the collection homecoming by hosting a free community-wide event that included a special concert by DeGrazia's youngest son and accomplished classical guitarist, Domingo. Ted DeGrazia's Superstition Collection, on display at the Superstition Mountain Museum. The museum is located at 4087 North Apache Trail, Highway 88, Apache Junction, Arizona. Before you visit the museum and take in the Superstition Collection, let us tell you a little bit of the story of DeGrazia and his mountain. At Torrey, Ted DeGrazia, is one of the best known and most widely recognized and reproduced artists in the world. But many people do not know about De Grazia's fascination and lifelong love affair with the Superstition Mountain, a mountain that he fondly referred to as my mountain. He was in love with the Superstition Mountains. He actually had his own gallery that he built up here. Uh, that was open, I believe, from 1978 till about 1983. He used to like to come up here for weekends whenever he could get away uh, from his gallery in Tucson, and he would ride into the mountains and explore and prospect, and he had a deep love for the Superstition Mountains. He had um, been going up there since he was a boy. He was first introduced to the Superstition Mountains as a boy and never tired throughout his life of exploring and prospecting her hills and canyons. Through every stage of his life, from struggling art student to wealthy, successful artists enjoying worldwide fame, his favorite retreat was to visit my mountain. One of the reasons he built the Superstition Gallery was to have a place for the Superstition Collection. That's one reason we think it's so fitting that since the gallery is gone, that his collection can return to the Superstition Mountains and be displayed in a place just a couple of miles from where his gallery was. Unfortunately, his gallery is gone. Yeah. It, was, it was torn down. And oh, he worked in all kinds of media. In clay, he worked in stone, rock. Uh, cactus. And he painted uh, several different uh, styles. He, you know, he used watercolors, uh, oil paintings, and he did a lot of sketches. So there's a lot of different things to look at. I think looking at the paintings, you can see his fondness and fascination with the mountain. 
his fascination and interest in the story of the um, lost Dutchman and all the uh, embellishments that surround it. Some of the narratives he wrote to go with the Superstition Collection and some of the paintings depict um, the Apaches and the Spaniards up there and follow those legends as well of the Apache Massacre at the Massacre Grounds. I think his, I think his affection for the whole mountain range, the whole area, and, and the stories and the legends uh, of the mountains show through in his, in his artwork. And that's what he wanted, that's, and I think he wanted to share that feeling he had with, with everyone.